Hello, and welcome to tonight's bedtime story about Aster, a young boy who goes on a cosmic adventure to learn the secrets of the universe. My name is Jake, and I'll be your interstellar narrator tonight. But before we begin, let's do a short meditation to calm our body and mind. Settle into your bed and be sure you're in a comfortable position. Close your eyes when you're ready and bring your attention to your breath. Notice how the air flows in and out of your nostrils, filling your lungs and emptying them. Feel the rise and fall of your chest and abdomen, the gentle rhythm of your breath. Don't try to change or control your breathing, just observe it as it is. As you breathe, imagine that you're inhaling a warm and soothing light and exhaling any negative or unwanted thoughts or feelings. With each breath, you are filling your body and mind with peace and calm and releasing any worries or fears. You are becoming more relaxed and more centered with each breath. Now. Imagine that you are surrounded by a beautiful and starry night sky. You can see the moon and the planets, the constellations and the galaxies, the stars and the nebulae. You can hear the soft music of the cosmos, the harmony of creation. You can feel the vastness and the wonder of the universe, the connection and the unity of all things. As you continue to breathe, Feel a gentle lift in your body. You feel lighter and freer as if you are floating in the air. You feel a gentle breeze on your skin as if you are flying in the wind. Feel the gentle warmth in your heart as the light within you grows brighter. Let go of any attachment to the ground and allow yourself to float weightless in the loving embrace of the universe. And now, let's soar into the story of Aster, the Star Child. Enjoy the journey, my friend, and may your dreams be filled with the magic of the cosmos. Aster was a young boy who had always loved the stars. He would spend hours gazing at the night sky, wondering what secrets they hid, what stories they told, what wonders they witnessed. He dreamed of traveling among them, of seeing them up close, of becoming one of them, Little did he know that his dreams were about to come true. One night, as Aster lay in a starlit grassy field, he felt a strange connection to the sky and whispered a wish to the heavens above, show me the answers I seek. To his surprise, the stars answered him with a voice that echoed through the night. Ask and you shall receive, search and you shall discover, knock and the door will be opened for you. A portal appeared in the sky, a bright opening that invited Aster to enter. The voice said, Enter, seeker of truths. The answers you seek lie beyond this gate. A world of wonders awaits you. Aster was curious and brave. He stepped into the portal and found himself in a different dimension. There, he saw amazing creatures made of stardust glowing and humming with cosmic energy. They welcomed him and surrounded him with their light. They said, We are the children of the stars. We are here to guide you and show you the secrets of the universe. They led him to a river of starlight, a flowing stream of pure energy that carried the whispers of ancient knowledge. They said, This is the river of life. It connects all things in the cosmos It will show you the wonders and horrors of creation. It will teach you the mysteries and paradoxes of existence. It will challenge you and enlighten you. Are you ready to join us? Aster nodded and immersed himself in the river. He felt a surge of joy and awe as the river embraced him and showed him visions of distant galaxies and cosmic events. He saw the birth and death of stars the formation and destruction of planets, the rise and fall of civilizations. He saw the beauty and the chaos, 
the order and the randomness, the harmony and the conflict of the universe. He felt a sense of connection, a unity that softly intertwined him with the cosmos. He was not just a spectator, but a participant in the cosmic dance. The stardust creatures danced with him, leaving trails of glittering dust in their wake. He perceived not just with his eyes, but with his whole being, absorbing the cosmic energy that flowed through the dimension. He was filled with wonder and humility. He felt like he was part of something bigger than himself, something that transcended the boundaries of space and time. He felt like he was invited to partake in the celestial symphony. The stardust creatures pulsed with energy, echoing the heartbeat of the cosmos, and Aster was in tune with them. The river of starlight carried Aster deeper into the cosmos, where he saw more wonders and mysteries. He was joined by the stardust creatures who danced and sang with him, sharing their joy and wisdom. He felt a bond with them, a friendship that spanned the stars. But the river had more surprises for him. As he followed its flow, he saw giant shapes emerge from the darkness. They were space whales, graceful and wise, with constellations on their skin. They greeted Aster with their songs, which echoed the harmony of the universe. The space whales invited Aster to swim with them, and he accepted. He felt a connection with them, too, a kinship that transcended words. They showed him the balance and the cycle of the cosmos, the interplay of creation and destruction, the exchange of matter and energy, the transformation of form and essence. They said, You are part of the universe, and the universe is part of you. You are here to learn and to grow, to love and to create, to experience and to enjoy. You are here to fulfill your potential and to contribute to the cosmic harmony. You are here to be happy. He thanked the whales for sharing their wisdom. But Aster's journey was not over yet. The River of Starlight had one more destination for him, one more secret to reveal. As he followed its course, he saw a bright structure in the distance. It was the Celestial Library, a magnificent building made of clouds, stars, and the very fabric of the galaxy. It was the repository of all the knowledge in the universe, the archive of all the stories and histories of creation. As he approached the library, he saw fiery shapes flying around it. They were cosmic phoenixes, radiant and powerful, with flaming feathers and sparkling eyes. They were the guardians of the library, the protectors of the cosmic knowledge. They watched Aster with curiosity and respect, recognizing him as a seeker of truth. The phoenixes welcomed Aster with their fiery trails, which formed a gateway to the library. They said, We are here to show you the library of stars, where all the secrets of the universe are stored, where you can find the answers to any question, the solutions to any problem, the inspiration to any dream. This is where you can learn from the past, understand the present, and shape the future. This is where you can discover your true self and your true destiny. He thanked the phoenixes and stepped through the threshold. Entering the celestial library was like stepping into an enchanted dreamscape. The air was filled with a gentle hum, a cosmic melody that resonated with the accumulated wisdom of eons. Shelves, adorned with twinkling star constellations, stretched into infinity, and each shelf held scrolls, ancient tomes, and celestial artifacts, all aglow with the soft radiance of forgotten galaxies. But something else caught his eye. Luminous little nebula fairies, twinkling like cosmic fireflies, danced and floated around the library, their movements leaving trails of stardust creating a breathtaking celestial dance that illuminated the vast repository. He was greeted by the little starlight beings, who said, We are the helpers of the library. We are here to assist you in any way you need. We are here to show you the books of stars, where all the stories of the universe are written. They led him to the shelves of stars, where each star was a book, and each book was a story. He asked them to show him the books that he wanted to read, the stories that he wanted to hear, 
the secrets that he wanted to know. They agreed and led him deeper into the library. As Aster approached the heart of the library, the celestial glow within the repository intensified. The ambiance became a symphony of soft whispers, cosmic hums, and the occasional flutter of pages turning by unseen heavenly hands. There, positioned at the heart of the library, was the celestial guardian, perched atop a regal dais. His colossal form dominated the cosmic chamber, commanding attention as the keeper of the repository. Enormous eyes, radiant with the ancient wisdom of galaxies, peered down from its vantage point, overseeing the endless shelves of stellar knowledge. Majestic feathers adorned with the essence of distant realms cascaded down from the regal figure, creating an otherworldly cascade that seemed to merge with the heavenly ambiance of the library. The wings, when unfurled, spanned across the entire expanse of the vast room, casting a shadow that danced with the glow of ancient constellations. Aster looked up at the cosmic sentinel. He felt a mix of awe and fear as he faced the majestic being. He wondered what the sentinel wanted from him and what he would say to him. The sentinel spoke and his voice filled the chamber with a cosmic melody. He said, Greetings, Aster. I am the Cosmic Owl, the keeper of the Celestial Library. I have been watching you and I am impressed by your curiosity and courage. You have come a long way and you have learned a lot. You have a heart that loves, a mind that thinks, a soul that dreams. You have a gift that you can share, a message that you can spread, a legacy that you can leave, and a purpose that you can fulfill. Aster felt a surge of gratitude and respect. He thanked the owl and bowed to him. He said, Thank you, Cosmic Owl. Thank you for letting me into your celestial library. The owl smiled and nodded. He said, you are welcome, Aster. You are welcome to the Library of Stars. You are welcome to the knowledge of the universe. You are welcome to the cosmos. But I have something more to offer you. Something that no one else has ever seen. Something that no one else has ever known. Something that no one else has ever become. I have an offer that you can accept or decline. An offer that will change your life forever. An offer that will make you a god. Aster felt a pang of curiosity and a little doubt. He asked the owl, What is your offer, cosmic owl? What do you want from me? What do you want me to become? The owl said, This is the final book of the celestial library. If you read this book, you will learn the ultimate truth of the universe. You will gain the knowledge of the gods. You will become one of them, but you will also lose something precious. You will become free of desire but also alone. Think carefully before you proceed, for once you read this book, there is no going back. Aster was intrigued by the Cosmic Owl's offer. He had always been curious about the secrets of the universe. These could be the answers he was seeking. He decided to take a look at the book that the owl handed him. It was a thick tome, bound in leather and adorned with gold. The title was written in an ancient script that he couldn't read but the owl translated it for him, the book of all things. Aster opened the book and began to read. He was amazed by the stories and legends that filled the pages. He learned about the creation of the worlds, the origin of the gods, the wars and the alliances that shaped the history of the cosmos. He read about the heroes and the villains that rose and fell, the wonders and horrors that they encountered, the love and hate they felt. He read about the mysteries and paradoxes that puzzled the minds of the gods, the secrets and revelations that enlightened them, the questions and answers that challenged them. He read for hours, days, weeks. He lost track of time and space. He forgot about his hunger, his thirst, his fatigue. He forgot about his friends, his family, his home. He forgot about his quest, his purpose, his destiny. He only cared about the book and the knowledge that it contained. He read until he reached the last chapter. There, he saw a warning that said, Beware, reader, this is the final chapter of the Book of All Things. 
If you read this chapter, you will learn the ultimate truth of the universe. You will gain the knowledge of the gods. You will become one of them. Think carefully before you proceed, for once you read this chapter, there is no going back. He wondered what the ultimate truth was and what it would cost him. He wondered if he really wanted to become a god and if he was ready to give up his humanity. He looked at the cosmic owl, who was watching him with a curious and expectant expression. The owl said, Well, Aster, this is it. The final chapter of the book of all things. The moment of truth. Are you going to read it? Are you going to become a god? Aster hesitated. He felt a tug in his heart, a whisper in his mind, a spark in his soul. He felt something that he had almost forgotten, something that he had been suppressing, something that he had been ignoring. He felt his desire. He felt his desire to live, to love, to learn, and to grow. He felt his desire to explore, to discover, to create, to share. He felt his desire to be happy, to be human, to be himself. He realized that he didn't want to become a god. He realized that he didn't want to know everything, that he didn't want to be free of desire, that he wanted to be happy. He closed the book and said to the owl, No, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to become a god. I'm going to stay human. I'm going to go back to my world, to my people, to my life. I'm going to remember everything that I have learned, but I'm also going to appreciate everything that I already have. I'm going to be happy. The owl was surprised and impressed. It said, Wow, Aster, you have made a wise and brave choice. You have resisted the temptation of the book of all things. You have preserved your desire, your passion, your emotion, your life, and therefore what makes you human. Congratulations, Aster. You have completed your quest. You have gained the knowledge of the gods, but you have also kept your humanity. You have become something more than a god. You have become a star child. Aster felt a surge of joy and gratitude. He thanked the owl and hugged it. He asked the owl to take him back to his world, to his people, to his life. The owl agreed and plucked a feather from itself and threw it into the air. The feather burst into flames, creating a fiery portal that opened up to the same field Aster left from. The owl said, This is your way back, Aster. This is your home. This is your life. Go and live it well. Go and share your knowledge, your wisdom, your stories. Go and inspire your people, your friends, your family. Aster thanked the owl again and said goodbye. He stepped into the portal and returned to his world, to his home, to his life. He shared his knowledge, his wisdom, his stories with his people, his friends, and his family. He inspired them, taught them, and helped them. He fulfilled his purpose, he achieved his destiny, and he found his happiness. He never forgot his journey, he never stopped looking at the stars, and he never stopped being a star child.